now we're recording. Oh, wow. Always oh, Gary. <laughs> So welcome back to my vlog, everybody. This is my lovely mother who is joining me today. Hello. <laughs> and today we are going to have a discussion about parent involvement in your child's sport, basically. And we're just going to have sort of a back and forth conversation about some questions that I have with regards to how my mom dealt with things while me and my brothers were swimming and growing up in the sport. We're basically going to have a conversation. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. So this is sort of the way that like things happened in my life and in my brother's life and my mom and how she handled things and my parents and everything like that and my dad was involved as well. But that doesn't mean that this works for everybody. This is just from our perspective and maybe if there's a little bit of advice or a piece of something from this video that can help you as a parent or as a kid if you want to like talk to your parents about it that might help you then that's great but this there's definitely more than one way to do this this is just how it kind of went through my life and uh and with my mom and everything so let's get started so to start out what was your general approach when like we started swimming very young um me jeffrey and alistair can you kind of walk us through maybe how you approached being a parent of kids when you were when we were young and then as we got more serious into the sport as teenagers and then moved into university with it and how your role maybe changed how involved you thought you should be and just sort of general and then we'll get into some more specifics mm -hmm. sure so you know um i think that chris's and my general approach towards swimming uh, generally speaking, was not any different from anyone else, any other parent, in the sense that you want your kids involved in sports for a whole host of reasons, for general health, mm -hmm. for their mental health, um, discipline, time management, um, taking instruction, executing instruction, and basically staying out of trouble, right? Like you don't <laughs> yeah. want your kids, like one of my friends said, um, it's cheaper than bail. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if I would ever you know, go that far, but anyway, you know, that is, is a general uh, answer. But, you know, um, from the perspective of my background as a parent, mm -hmm. you know, being a kid that grew up on a farm, I never was involved in sports. Right. And then I met Chris, who was a really phenomenal athlete, mm -hmm. a very good swimmer. And I uh, fell in love with him, mm -hmm. and I also felt I really did fall in love with swimming. Yeah. It was, it, yeah, it was really wonderful, and and uh, it opened up my eyes to a whole other world. And as you know, over time, swimming really became the foundation of our family, mm -hmm. and it was it was such a, a big part of what we what we did. And so, moving from children to teenagers to adulthood. I would say, generally speaking, your role as a parent doesn't ever change mm -hmm. in the sense that you are always supporting your child mm -hmm. in whatever way you can. But the mechanics of it just change. Like when you're little and when you're, right. you know, into and you're, you don't have a driver's license, you're taking them to the pool and you're mm -hmm. taking them to meets and, and um, getting them their food and all of those day-to-day -day things. Yeah. And then as they move into adulthood, those things all fall away. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe even more so than ever, if you've got a child that has moved up to those senior levels, then the more emotional support that you have to give them um, is greater. So right. it, it's it's just the balance yeah. that, that changes. Okay, yeah. And yeah, like helping them deal, because when we were young, like swimming was more of like a fun thing to do and kind of before we got serious and had to had more of that emotional toll and, and navigating those kinds of things when you're that young. Um, I know it was challenging for me and as parents like giving advice that, I'm, yeah, that definitely right. would change a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. With you, uh, mm -hmm. for example, you started swimming at a fairly uh, serious level when you were very young. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe 12 or 13. Yeah. And, uh, and it was different than Jeffrey, mm -hmm. you know, right. Jeffrey really, you know, started swimming at a senior level when he was much older and he's a guy. Yeah. So you have different dynamics. Mm. You've got different genders. You've got different um, right. trajectories and uh, very different paths and then very different people. Right. So would you say then with regards to Jeffrey and I and even Alistair, did you notice a difference in your approach or how we responded to, to swimming, I guess? as versus like um, a female versus male? Um, 
I would say that, uh, you know, you're, as a parent, that's, we were really, really busy mm -hmm. at that time. And you've got, you know, three kids in a sport. Mm -hmm. You're looking after school. Yeah. You're looking after my career, mm -hmm. Chris's career. And we were involved in the administration, like being on the board of directors and president of the swim right. club. So there was a lot of stuff going on. And when I look back on it, I think that it was more, you know, um, <laughs> we're not like unlike any other kid. You know, you drop your kids off at the pool and mm -hmm. you kind of hope that everything is going to go okay. Yeah. But generally speaking, you know, if you, if you uh, observe that, you know, something is go kind of going off the rails. Mm -hmm. um, like when you started str started struggling mm -hmm. a little bit with swimming when you were younger, mm -hmm. um, then, um, you know, and that, that became fairly apparent yeah. that, uh, you know, then you have to intervene and, and, and do something different. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into that. Yes, for sure. We'll get into that. Yeah. But I, I would say based on gender, no, I would say not based on gender. I would say okay. it's more just based on the person. Yes, yeah. And, and their path. Right. That's yes, very and different. we will get into that. Yeah. <laughs> so when we started out um, in sports and when we were kids, kids are kind of involved in a lot of different sports to start. And so with swimming, you guys put us in mainly because of dad and he had his love for swimming. And so we were um, put in the sport at a very young age. Would you say that it, I, like, I don't remember it being a very difficult decision for me to decide to just do swimming when I was... I don't know, the age of 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember there being much sort of like pushing towards swimming. Uh, and so would you say that you guys had hoped that we had chosen swimming or would you have cared that much if we had gone a different route with a different sport? Was it easier that we were all in swimming until, you know, Alistair kind of went down a different uh, trajectory? And thoughts on that, did you? Because I think dad was kind of more into it maybe than into swimming and being like, you guys should swim than maybe mm -hmm. you were. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, starting out when you were small with three very active kids, uh, swimming was an actual thing that we did just for fun. Yeah. Sure. And we did a lot of that. And we, you know, a cold winter in Regina, Yeah. you know, <laughs> like, where are you going to take your kids? <laughs> yeah, and true. so like every weekend we were at the swimming pool. True. It's not unlike kid, uh, families who are very hockey oriented true. will take their kids and like by three years old, they're skating right. like rings around, you yeah. know, and they're doing really well. So, um, and so that, that was really fun and that was really convenient. And the three of you, um, being, so close together in age, mm -hmm. I really uh, have to say, like, now that I think about it, that that was actually key, too. Yeah. You know, you were all under four. Yeah. And so you all were capable of, mm -hmm. like, swimming together and, right. and being, um, you know, in similar groups when it came to actually um, swimming after school. Right. And, uh, and, and moving forward. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were all very close in age. So that, that was kind of a factor, too. But then, um, you know, as we move forward... Uh, for sure, you know, it, it's really good to be engaged in other sports. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, you know, there were any number, you know, when Jeffrey was even in cadets. Right. And then you also took music. And so music was a good thing because you think about the development of the brain. And right. And it's good to, you know, do, to do that as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, you know, and as you move through, and of course there's sports that you only do in the summer mm -hmm. and then ones that you only do in the winter. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was a factor too with swimming because all those other sports like baseball yeah. and soccer, they fall by the wayside. There right. isn't True. any possibility. And so, so, you know, moving towards swimming, yes, it was quite clear that you and Jeffrey really wanted that. Mm -hmm. um, with Alistair, he, he um, played hockey mm -hmm. for a number of years and really quite liked it. Yeah. But I think that he would be admittedly saying that he didn't do well in, in hockey. I mean, we mm -hmm. never we never engaged in hockey when you kids were young. Yeah. And so when he started playing hockey, you know, there were kids, they they could skate so much mm -hmm. faster than him. Yeah. And so, you know, so, so we put in him some schools in the summer, mm -hmm. like hockey in the summer. Yeah. Um, but uh, I kind of looked after swimming at that time, and Chris was looking after hockey. Mm. So we had to kind of divide and conquer, So because we were doing both. We were busy, and Alistair wasn't going far for his hockey, but there were a lot of out-of-town town games sure. like Raymond and yeah. you know, McGrath and places like that. So, so you know, a, a credit to Chris that he was never a hockey player, never never put on skates when he was <laughs> yeah. a kid. He's, he's got it. Yeah. He took that on. And, and um, then, so it was really Alistair that was a fork in the road, you know, does he end up going towards hockey or going right. towards 
swimming. And so I could kind of see the writing on the wall that, you know, he wasn't going to do well in hockey. Mm -hmm. And my heart isn't in swimming. I mean, isn't in hockey. I, yeah, just, and neither was Chris's. And so I think that, (laughs) (laughs) how poor is that? (laughs) So, you know, maybe we just kind of nudged Alistair in a, in a direction when he was about 12, Yeah, you know, to continue with swimming. And he was a good swimmer. We nudged him in that direction. And I don't, remember him objecting yeah. you know strenuously to it and yeah. so you know yeah so with the three of us how did you know when it was good to to push us and then when it was maybe not the best to push us whether it be like stick with the sport keep trying hard on a day-to-day basis kind of thing because for me like I went through a real struggle in my teenage days but you encouraged me to keep going. You didn't like force me or anything like that. I wouldn't say that or anything. I, I just wonder, cause I, like, I don't know myself how I would be able to judge that of where like I was struggling and I kept going with the sport. Whereas Alistair stopped the sport at, I think when he was 15 and, and you were oh, I accepted that. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't something that you felt to say, no, like you should stay with the sport and kind of like mm-hmm. force him <laughs> back mm-hmm. in there. How do you know when to push and when to pull back? Mm-hmm. That, you know, that's a really good question. You know, you and Alistair are very different people. Mm-hmm. And so I'll take Alistair to start. Sure. So it was um, apparent to us that Alistair wasn't enjoying swimming mm-hmm. at a per- certain point in time. And it wasn't just like, didn't want to compete anymore. He didn't want to go to um, to practice uh, on the odd occasion. It was consistently over a period mm, of time. Okay. And it wasn't just, yeah, like a week or right. something like that, where everybody, yeah, I don't feel like, yeah. you know, <laughs> swimming or whatever. You have that. Yeah, you know, still to today, day. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, it, it's just sort of like our approach towards the sport. We're you know at the at the end of the day you want your kid to be happy mm-hmm. and especially when by the time that you're 15 you're working hard yeah. at the sport mm-hmm. um you know there's no amount of conjoling or like encouragement <laughs> that's going to change the fact that the kid doesn't like like doing what he's doing right. and so you know when I was observing Alistair and I would be sometimes in the stand watching and and you know he was getting out of the water mm-hmm. he wasn't completing his uh, practices mm-hmm. and um, and he was verbalizing that yeah. you know he, yeah. and, and I think I think that he did stick with it as long as he could yeah um, and and so with him it was you know even even with you we didn't aspire to our kid. We, it would be lovely if your child made it to the Olympics, mm-hmm. but like we, it wasn't the be all and all. Right. Like, oh my God, like, you know, like you've got to work at it so that you're an Olympic level, yeah, yeah. you know, champion kind right. of thing. We were not like that. No. And so with Alistair, uh, I didn't want um, you kids coming home from school and sitting at the computer or watching TV after school. That was kind of a rule. Mm -hmm. And so then I basically just said to Alistair, you can do what you want, Mm -hmm. but you have to find something to do after school. Mm -hmm. That was when we actually looked at at football and we explored that. And um, there's other, a couple of other sports that we thought about, maybe badminton or something like that. And then Alistair cottoned onto the idea about actually a a band Mm -hmm. and doing drumming in a band. And he did pursue that. And he, he even plays to this day yeah and he loved it yeah and I got to know some of the parents that were involved there was three or four kids that were you know about the same age they played in the band in somebody's basement mm-hmm. and still had to drive him there and pick him up and and uh, that was fine with me yeah I, I didn't necessarily like it when they were all driving off in a van in the <laughs> middle of winter and they were going right. to do a gig in Regina yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway they did yeah you know and they actually slept in the van yeah, yeah. and and I think that they would look back on it with, with fondness yeah and they did that so yeah. I, I was happy with that, mm-hmm. you know, and and uh, and Alistair did well, and he loved it, and mm-hmm. so and I think that I had paid him as much attention to him in his music as I did in swimming. Mm-hmm. You know, we would go to some of his concerts, and right. he played at school. Yeah, you know, they had band day at school, and yeah. so that was that was really good. So, you know, with respect to you, then the you know, that's kind of like you could write a book about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought that it would be really cool to write a book about parents and their um, experiences with a sport Mm -hmm. where you've got a high level athlete, Mm -hmm. whether they succeed 
or actually whether they don't succeed yeah. in the sport. It would be interesting to see what their take on it is mm -hmm. because there's so much that we could probably learn from each other. Totally. Yeah. But but in your case, um, you know, I think that you are honest about your um, really quick rise to um, a high level of swimming when you were very young. Mm -hmm. And then you're plateauing yeah. over the course of a, a number of years. Mm -hmm. So when I say that I love swimming, mm -hmm. I also say that I hated swimming. <laughs> yeah. So I had a love-hate relationship yeah. with, the, with the sport at that time. Mm -hmm. So with you, I never heard from you ever say you didn't want to go to practice. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you didn't want to compete. I'm not sure. I can't remember whether you said like you didn't really want to yeah. go to a race, race or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That might have been the case yeah. um, that you didn't want to. But I don't remember saying like, yeah, like you've got to stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would never have said that. Mm -hmm. But there was the feeling that you on a day-to-day -day basis stuck with it out of your own accord. Mm. And there were times when I knew that it was extremely difficult for you. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of stuck in a situation where there was really only one swim club yeah. here that you could stick with. Yeah. And, and the coach and nothing against the coach, but mm -hmm. just that maybe in another city where there was, where there might, a change might have been helpful. Yeah. And you were living in a city like Calgary that's got four big clubs or mm -hmm. five big clubs. You could have moved. Yeah. And that might have helped. But here we were. Yeah. You know, and there was nothing that we could do about that. And so like you stuck with it. But there were times when you're lying in bed in the middle of the night and you're just saying, oh my God, like I said to myself, this is too much. Yeah. You know, this is too much. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, I just had to deal with that myself mm -hmm. and just find some strength to kind of carry on on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. When it came to, I think, where the case was that you were struggling with races. Mm -hmm. Um, that was when my sister, who's a psychologist and, and so sociologist type yeah. of um, person, God bless her, mm -hmm. you know, said, I think that Rachel needs some help. Yeah. And then, you know, the very next day, literally, mm -hmm. I was looking for a sports psychologist to help you with the yeah. mental game. Yeah. And then we found, you know, your Charlene. sport, Charlene. Yeah. And then she's been with you for years. Since then. <laughs> and that's right. Yeah. Exactly. And then it kind of offloaded. Like there there are people right. with experience and expertise that can offload that um, burden on you as a parent yeah. to somebody else that does True. a way better job. Yeah. You know, and me never being an, um, never being an athlete right. and certainly not an athlete at that level. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was really happy. And really since then, um, we put it on her mm -hmm. and, and, and she dealt with Chris and I too. Yeah. I mean, we had meetings with her That's true, because yeah, she worked with the, that. she worked at the university of Lethbridge right. where we, we, where we worked too. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, was, uh, like, I mean, you gave her your Olympic ring. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because she was so intimate. <laughs> yeah. Like I definitely would have, I don't think I, I would have either quit or I wouldn't have reached anywhere near the level that I did uh, if it wasn't for her, for sure. Because uh, I, d I don't know how I would have made it. Because a parent support, you're right, like a parent support goes so far, but it can't, it's not everything. Exactly. And you need more concrete tools mm. to deal with things mm. day to day because you can a parent can say like oh like mm. just go out and get them or like try your best and it'll be fine mm -hmm. and 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 you know and that's what parents do and like and that's all you're kind of expected like you're not a specialist in that area like yeah. so what are you supposed to say and and whereas with Charlene like she was like okay these are like three different types of strategies or tools or whatever it might be visualization etc etc that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis or in practice to help you manage that and like cope with things and here's what's wrong here's a solution like it was very much more applicable things yeah. instead of just yeah. being like here's a little band-aid of some nice yeah. words yes. which is which is yeah. fine and like I say yeah and that's totally fine but but you need you need more and like when would you say that I had started seeing Shirley maybe 13 or 14 yeah 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 and young and now I'm 27 and I'm still seeing her yeah, right. all the time and yes. uh so yes. for like definitely one of the things 
I would say from this conversation, if your kid's struggling or you see that, and I think you would agree that from a parent's perspective as well, and I can say that from an athlete's perspective, get professional help. Mm -hmm. If you see that they're struggling mentally, um, like physical is one thing, but, but mentally is like, you got to take care of your mental health. Would you say? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, uh, to put it in context, mm -hmm. um, we can say, okay, we're parents and we've been through maybe similar situations, sure. right? But, but we're, we're not, mm -hmm. we haven't been yeah. because, I've been through uh, difficult situations too, yeah. but the only equivalent to what you were through, go, going through, was, uh, and it, this isn't even close, mm -hmm. was that, you know, I did a PhD, right? right? And that was really a lot of work yeah. over a long period of time. Yeah. But, and I spent a lot of years in school, mm -hmm. in university, so, and a number of years in graduate school. And so then I can say, oh yeah, I've been through trouble and I, I, I've had my own, uh, own up and ups and downs. But it's so different yeah. because um, with almost everything that you do, almost every experience that a person has, generally speaking, mm -hmm. the effort that they put into it will be equivalent to the result. Mm. So if I've got an exam mm -hmm. or I'm writing an essay yeah. or I'm writing a thesis or a dissertation, the effort that I put into it, generally speaking, will get you the result that right. you want. Right. Um, that wasn't the case with you, no. you know, and it maybe still isn't the case sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're still, and how many swimmers are out there that, that, that do that have that situation? Yeah. It is extraordinarily difficult. Yes. You could see that, yeah. you, you know, how many kids have we seen on the deck crying? Mm -hmm. I don't think that I've ever cried over a bad mark, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I don't think that I've ever come, you know, like I that. have, or the, or the, <laughs> And then in my master's program. <laughs> oh, no. uh, but, but I mean, yes. even you can say so, too, that, you know. Um, Short list. They, yes, exactly. Yes. But, you know, so, so we as parents have got to realize mm -hmm. that, like, and how many parents are, are competitive swimmers? Not many. Yeah. I don't think that I know Chris is. Yeah. You know. Mm. But his experience is different very from yours, different. Yes. and so yeah. you know, yeah. very different from yours too. And yeah. so even even and a really good point is that even Chris, as a high level athlete, but even with what you were going through mentally, yeah. Chris couldn't couldn't uh, relate to that. No, not at he all. He couldn't give you advice. Yeah, he tried to. He gave you encouragement. He, very, he really tried to. I remember distinctly one day for a Saturday morning practice when I was young. I was really the coach had told us the set the day before and how challenging it was going to be and how the pace that he wanted us to go and what have you and that really freaked me out <laughs> mm -hmm. the night before and 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 I remember dad just trying and trying to be mm. like try thinking it of the like this and try like mm. please try to think of it this way and I like there's just a different frequency and even to this day when we talk about swimming like we disagree on philosophies of coaching how to approach races like everybody's very mm. different and so mm -hmm. yeah, with swimming like mm -hmm. it's easier for me to talk to you about how races went mm -hmm. than it is sometimes mm -hmm. with that because uh, we just don't see eye to eye mm -hmm. on things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And yet you've got a great relationship yeah. with Chris. Yeah. Like you oh, guys yeah. are very, very close. Yeah. But not with that. Yes. And even um, as relates to generally speaking the role of parents, mm -hmm. um, putting that in context of you know, the role that Charlene plays, mm -hmm. well, there's also a role for coaches. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And so um, one thing that I said to parents when I was speaking to them about, uh, we had a sort of a parent um, meeting where we talked about the Youth Olympics. Mm. And I said, right. when you are swimming at that level when you're young, mm -hmm. the, the coach and the staff with Swim Canada mm -hmm. and, and all of those people that are specialists in swimming, they have their role. Yeah. But your role as a parent that's separate yes. and they they will keep you very separate yeah. <laughs> yeah to the point that you know like when we were in singapore and yeah. we were there we you don't, don't see, see you us. yeah and and they the the staff with swim canada um don't want parents 
um, around you. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, you can say hi and you can say great job and all of that stuff, but then they whisk you off. Yes. And then, and that was the way that it was since you were very young. Yeah. And you were on those teams. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's another thing that people, uh, parents should be cognizant of. Um, it doesn't matter what age, Mm -hmm. if your if your kid is getting on those kinds of teams, Mm -hmm. you know, your role is very subscribed Yes. and it's very narrow and there are boundaries. So that, you know, like, you know, I'm saying big boundaries, you know, so don't no, cross touching. over into, that's right. Don't cross over into trying to coach your kid yes. or trying to, trying to mentally, you know, yeah. help them, you know, because you've never been there. Yeah. There's no people way. For that. And there's people for that. That's yeah. right. And so remember and respect the role of the coach. Yeah. And so I've seen parents that go right on to the deck mm-hmm. and they are chastising the coach for something that the coach did. That's certainly not your role. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to say something, you have a meeting with the coach Mm -hmm. and you do it later Mm -hmm. and the coach will say, you know, he'll give you his opinion and you can discuss it then. (laughs) But generally speaking, there's no role for that. There's no room for that. So that leads really well into my next question is how do you deal with a kid after or how did you deal with us anyways after a race, whether that be a disappointing race is probably what will give the most attention to because when when things are good things are good it's you know it's not if there's a good race then great and you're happy and everybody's happy but all of us kids had disappointing races mm-hmm. very disappointing races and and for me at all different levels um going up through the system and to where i am today can you speak towards the parents role and how you approach that and maybe some strategies that you used or because it's hard like what do you say to a kid after they have had a bad race and you see that and as a parent like are frustrated mad sad like Mm -hmm. how do you manage those emotions do you let them out what's the role of the coach what's your role and was it different between me and Jeffrey and Alistair kind of elaborate upon that yeah well I I think that uh you know, unfortunately, you've narrowed it down to like, what do you do when, um, you know, someone's disappointed? Yeah. Because it is so much easier yeah. to say, and the answer would be so much easier to say, like when, when things are going well, it's so easy to say, way to go. You've all contributed to that, right? Mm-hmm. And so as parents, um, we are congratulating ourselves too, mm-hmm. because, you know, we helped you get there. But it is really, really difficult. And and when when things don't go well, and I, I, I swimming, I don't know about other sports because mm-hmm. I've never been involved in another sport at such a high level. But there, I would say probably more times than not, there are disappointments rather than wow, I did I did great. Yeah. Especially as you get older. Yeah. And you know when you're when you're young and you're shaving off a second or two of your time for. A 200 breast circle that's yeah. easy yeah and then as little. you get to 15 16 to 17 if you even make a best time yeah like that that's amazing yeah. and more often than not that's not the case mm-hmm. and so uh, what can you say yeah you know so that you know you I think that more often you know we give you a hug we're driving back to the hotel mm-hmm. you know and and there's not much that we can say until the individual actually wants to say something Mm -hmm. and then of course you listen and if that swimmer wants to vent you know and say like that was just such a crappy Mm -hmm. you know swim and they just want they they just want to vent um then of course you listen to that i don't know as um a parent that never swam there's no way that you should be saying you could have done this different that's not right Mm -hmm. and i think there are some parents that do that yes i mean like I shouldn't, maybe I'm going too far uh, to say like, that I will yeah. say this anyway, that, yeah. that you know, your, your stroke wasn't good, yeah. you know, um, or you didn't, you didn't swim fast enough or your turn or whatever. Then the coach will do that, yeah. you know, and you once said, um, if a parent is feeling bad about a race, they can't feel any worse than the swimmer. Mm, yeah. So there's nothing that you can say that's going to make the swimmer feel any worse than they already do. Yeah. You know, so so there's that. I, I think that maybe Chris saw it a little bit differently, that he sometimes gave advice about mm-hmm. uh, about a race. Mm-hmm. And he was, in all good intention, you know, yes, wanting to help. Yeah. But I don't think even with his experience mm-hmm. that you really felt that that was his role no. anyway. No, it almost felt like when he, and I again, it was, he was very nice about it. And just, it was more of like, it wasn't chastising or anything. It was just like, oh, you could have maybe done this better or whatever, like nicely put. But 
at that point, you finish your race, you already know what you messed up. Mm -hmm. You already know it's mm -hmm. a bad race. Mm -hmm. You get out, you mm -hmm. go talk to your coach, mm -hmm. they tell you it was a bad mm -hmm. race and tell you all the things that they did wrong, no matter how nice they put it. And and like Peter, the, the coach I'm working with right now, is always really nice uh, phrasing things and putting things in, and saying things about a race and, and um, these were good, but like, here's what we want to improve on, blah, blah, blah. And so that, that again, is makes you feel bad no matter how nice you say it your friends all are like "Ooh, like that mm. how did that go then you have to reiterate mm. all of that to them and then you're warming down and thinking about how bad that race is so the last thing that you want is to go all the way upstairs or wherever and have your parents tell you also how bad it was and then on top of that have a parent like with dad who knew swimming and again nicely put would say this could have been better it's like yeah mm -hmm. i know mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it was almost almost like to me it felt a little insulting because it's like i i'm aware of that right, already right. i already know that yeah i yeah i know yeah yeah <laughs> i know i screwed up yeah. so uh or this didn't go well or my conditioning wasn't gonna whatever it might be the only person i want telling me how to improve upon a race is the person that i've been working with mm -hmm. to get to that point mm -hmm. of that race which mm -hmm. is the coach that's right that's the only person yeah. i want talking to me about it and friends are always good too because you train beside them or teammates or whatever and they they sometimes have good advice about things too and and help each other out and things like that but in terms of like constructive criticism that's the only person who should be making those that's calls. right yeah. again even if you were a swimmer or you played the sport that your kid played you're different than your kid and times also change from when dad swam yeah. to when I'm swimming. Right. The strategies behind races, the strategies behind training are completely different now. That's right. And they don't, what he maybe did when he was swimming is, is different than it is now and, and doesn't really apply the same way. So. Maybe after a difficult race, a parent can say to their kid, what do you need? Like, what yeah. can I do? Yeah. You know, most of the time we were in another city and like I say, you're going back to the hotel do you want to go out for dinner? Yeah. You know, do you want to go to Dairy Queen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go to Burger King? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Um, or you just want to watch a movie or, yeah. or hang out in your room. Yeah. You know, what, what, do, what can I do to help? Yeah. What can I do to help is probably a thing um, that is best to say. Yes. The other thing too, is that I think that it equally important, at least well, maybe not equally important, but important too, is what do you say before a race? Mm. And so I remember when it was leading up to Olympic trial, yeah, and in 2016. In 2016. Yeah. And you were living with us because you had just come yeah. back and, and spent, you know, a few months with us after Dallas. Yeah. And after you'd finished your degree. And so it was, it was all leading up. Everybody, like all of our minds were sort of focused on like Olympic trials. Mm -hmm. And so I remember at home, we were trying to just keep everything as loose as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember you didn't even really want to talk about swimming. No. Like, you, you came home from your practices and, you know, we're just kind of cool and we're just kind of chill. We're not going to get too t uptight yeah. um, about about that, those important races that were coming up in Toronto. Yeah. And, um, and so then I think that I started doing the same thing with you before every race and I still do do to this day mm -hmm. and that is that I text you mm -hmm. and I say good luck with your race and have fun mm -hmm. and that's all I said and I remember when we talked about what going into that race and because we went to Toronto Chris yeah. and I were there and how like we wanted like how how you wanted to kind of set everything out so that you had a good race mm -hmm. and um you wanted everything to be as normal as possible yeah you you didn't want this to be a spec you know it was just like it was just like the olympics right yeah this is just a regular race yeah, right you know yeah. and that's how you kept your cool yeah and so it's sort of like if if a swimmer knows what they need mm -hmm. tell your parents yeah what you need before an important race mm -hmm. you can tell your parents just say good luck yeah you know yeah. or i don't need anything special yeah. or maybe i do need something yeah. special yeah. you know yeah. and and so if a swimmer t can tell their parents and they've got good communication with them and then say that mm -hmm. you know and you did yeah but then you were older i was i think it's a trial and error too because when you're young you don't know what you need yeah, sometimes maybe. until something happens and you're like oh i didn't really that mm. didn't really like 
go very well when you said that, or I didn't feel very good when you said that before my race, or something like that, or whatever the setup might be by that point, because I was 23 when Olympic trials came along, and so I, and I had been swimming since I was four, so there had been a lot, and the year before that uh, was the Pan Am Games and Worlds, and so I, I had had some practice with that too, and yeah, I just, I remember too, just, just keeping things as normal as possible, and, and things as like routine as possible mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. and not making a big big yeah. deal it's the same race yeah i swim a thousand yeah. more than a thousand times <laughs> yeah. at this point and there's no there's no point getting because then when like for me when when other people find things to be a big deal then i'm like oh maybe it is a big deal mm -hmm. and then it just it's kind of like like in class or something like that and there's there's homework due or something like that and this person's like oh this this assignment is really really hard and it's like it took me like 10 hours to do it or something something like that whatever and and then I'll think oh no like maybe it is really hard and I haven't even started it yet and then I'll get there and then it's like oh mm. it's not that bad mm, they, they, and right. then you worried for nothing so right. I think that for me anyways yeah like keeping having you guys calm cool cool cucumbers like we all know it's a big deal yeah we don't have to say it's a big deal we yeah. know it's a big deal that's right so that's right uh yeah that was definitely the way i like it anyway. well and and you know goes to the point that parents try to take your cues from your swimmer yeah and maybe ask them if they're like they have the equivalent when they're 12 yeah they have the equivalent of trials mm -hmm. Um, at some meet, maybe in Calgary, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, and it's a provincial right. championship, you yeah. know. And so, and and just ask, like, so what would you like us to do before the race? What yeah. would you, what would, what would help you make you feel better? How, what would you like me to do? Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, there's not no harm in that. And maybe the child doesn't know that's true. Yeah. But I mean, if they don't know, you sure don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so that's true. you know, yeah. you can And know. you can just try your best, and then if, like that's all right. you, and then if your kid says, "Yeah, that didn't work" or whatever, then you know for next there'll always be another race. You know. That's so, right. Yeah, especially when they're young, so you'll know for next time. Which is really good. To exactly. try something different, so there's it's not always another race. the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. That's to speak towards too. I think kids, parents, some times maybe need to give their kids a bit more credit in that at a younger age I think when kids are involved in sport they learn a lot of like coping skills and learn a lot more about themselves at a younger age than mm. maybe a child who's not involved totally. in sports yeah. and I think parents need to listen to that and yeah. and 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 yeah. and re understand and I might be not like if you agree because I don't have again I don't have kids but from what I see these kids are smart like yeah. they they know a lot about themselves and I think that maybe they might be shy in communicating some of these things or they don't even know to communicate them to a parent but if you ask them mm -hmm. they might have an answer mm -hmm. yeah that's right and the other thing is is that you're the child's coach will know that child better as a swimmer than you know yeah. them. Yeah. And so they know that what that person is like in the water, like you yeah. or, or anyone else. And so um, when we get back to like what the coach would say after a race, mm -hmm. that coach knows you. So yeah. you, they may feel that you're a person that maybe needs some extra, maybe they've been a bit a little lazy in practice right. and whatever. And, and the coach can actually say, you know, like you, uh, I, well, I mean, Brad Morey's one of his famous quotes was you get what you deserve mm, right. you know like whatever you put in the water you kind of get out of it yeah. and so like maybe the coach could say to that swimmer um you know maybe you could have practiced a little harder yeah. and, you know or we might work on something or yeah. you know like maybe you can push it a little bit more I don't know yeah but you know like but that's not for the parent to say mm, no. because the parent isn't coaching them yeah the parent might be sitting in the stands but they don't have a clue yeah <laughs> you yeah know, and you can't yeah. say that you do and so yeah. the coach knows you as a swimmer yes and we know you as a daughter yes yeah, and it's exactly. very different. Different relationships, different roles. For exactly. Sure. Yeah. So, just a couple last questions before we wrap it up. What would you say was the most challenging part of having us involved in sport, or one or two challenging parts? And that could even just be something like logistics, like traveling was a pain in the butt, or whatever it might be. And then, what was the most rewarding part? Did you find? Hmm. Um, broad, broad question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, probably the most challenging part was the the struggles that you went through in your teens, mm -hmm. because I don't think Jeffrey, who swam until like he was twenty six, I think he Something retired like twenty five, yeah. 
26, um, and then became a triathlete, mm -hmm. and he is a wonderful triathlete now. Yeah. Um, you know, he, well, he's, he's a quieter person, mm -hmm. and, um, and he had a, had a different path, which was different from yours, yeah. but I think that his path was more of a bit-by-bit, bit, step by step upward trajectory, you know, and he reached Olympic trials yeah. and came in eighth in the 200 breaststroke in Olympic trials. That was just great. I don't ever remember Jeffrey actually struggling, mm. but I would say, yes, that definitely was the case with you. Yeah. And it doesn't mean to say that there weren't rewards mm -hmm. um, because, uh, you know, one thing that I can say as a parent at least with respect to you, even though you will always say that the Olympics was never mm -hmm. uh, your goal, mm -hmm. that I can say quite happily that you achieve that mm -hmm. and you're happy with that too. Yeah, I would. Yeah, you wouldn't be happy <laughs> yeah. with that, exactly. Yeah. And so that, then w one can say that, you know, all of those challenges were worth it because, you know, being on an Olympic team and, and having those letters behind your name mm -hmm. um, opens up other doors. Mm -hmm. Now, there's lots of people that we know that worked as hard as you mm -hmm. and were in the same cohort at, yeah. the, at the same level. Mm -hmm. Even some kids that came in, they never started swimming when they were four, but came swimming when they were 12. Yeah. And part of your challenge was that those kids, you know, swam faster than you. Yeah. You know, when you were, when, you know, they, and they hadn't swam for as many years. And then you've got these new young swimmers that are competing against you and they do well. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. All of those swimmers, they had their own uh, story, mm -hmm. and many of them didn't get to the Olympic level mm -hmm. and never swam at that level. So then me as a parent, I all of those sleepless nights, mm -hmm. I can say, well, you know, I would say that was probably worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure people that don't get to that level and put in a lot of effort would say that, mm -hmm. would be able to say that. Yeah. That's another interesting question, is would you say that, uh, it's all worth it if people that strive to get on an Olympic team never did. Yeah. And that's a good question, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, and I, th I think that that was part of the, not strategy, but I think that maybe that was part of why I was able to stay in swimming for as long as I did and why I was, you know, relatively happy doing it into university mm -hmm. and things like that is because even when I was little like I never thought of swimming as being like I want to be an Olympian like that was never mm -hmm. really a big thing I, my ever since I was small it was always like I just want to try as like and be as good as I can be and get like as much potential out of that as I can and make sure I go leave my swimming career fulfilled that didn't necessarily mean making the Olympic team so I think before 2015 mm -hmm. I was still in university in undergrad and and I was having a great time in swimming like how we were mm -hmm. it was still hard and training at SMU was very difficult but the 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 teammates that I had there were really great swimming took me there uh, with the scholarship and swimming there and it developed me into the person that I am today and I'm happy with the person that I am today. So I think that there are different, from my perspective, there are different rewards from swimming and I wouldn't, I didn't seriously start considering the Olympics until 2015 mm. when I made my first national team. Mm. And so I think up until that point, I would have been perfectly happy to mm. swim out my university undergrad career and then finish and mm -hmm. retire from swimming as most people do after university but uh once 2015 hit and i had that success in 2015 then it clicked that i could actually realistically maybe make the team whereas in previous olympic trials like 2012 2008 mm -hmm. That was not realistic at all mm. to make the and and that was part of Charlene's training was mm -hmm. like make realistic goals mm. <laughs> and so I never really I made goals that I was like confident in and that I was like this is realistic and I can actually do this and that doesn't mean that kids shouldn't shoot for the stars or whatever but there's something to be said for realistic goals and so that you do actually feel fulfilled and but that's not how everybody runs and so I can't say that after 2015 and then where I did start to actually very much have that as a goal is making the Olympic team and if I hadn't have made it then maybe I would have left mm. swimming and have and because then I would have stopped after mm. university mm. and then I would have said well that wasn't worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's just how things turned out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But and, yeah. Yeah. So I think that people need to 
adjust their goals as their relationship with swimming changes. Like when you're a kid, it's easy to say, when I'm 20, I'm going to make the Olympic team because you're like 10 years old and you've got, it feels like eons away. Mm. But then as you grow up, you're like, oh, that's maybe not the most realistic thing. So I'm going to try to find other joys in swimming right. instead. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that that really is important. At the same time, when you're sort of in the trenches and you're not improving your time mm-hmm. in times over many, many um, races, yeah. you know, and over years, mm-hmm. like it's not uncommon. Yeah, no, to, no, to not plateau. at all. Yeah. It's not uncommon to have that happen. No. And and so then when you're in the trenches, I, I don't know the conversations that you and Charlene had, yeah. but I do remember you saying that she coached you to say that take the smallest thing that you can or something from the race everything isn't about time yeah no you know everything isn't about that and actually what is maybe the most significant part of being a highly successful competitive swimmer is tenacity yes it it is getting through those really and and grit and sticking with it yeah you know and so on a day-to-day basis I can equate to uh, writing my PhD thesis and it took me two years Mm -hmm. and you know like I remember um, you know, that's difficult. And I remember somebody saying to me, oh, well, um, you know, keep your eyes on the goal. Mm. And like, it's not that no. I, the goal is there. I know that I'm going <laughs> to yeah. reach that. It's actually the next day yeah. and actually getting up every yeah. single morning. And like, I had a, I had a goal of, of, uh, working five hours a day, every day right. for, for two years. Yeah. Um, in writing that yeah. over the course of, of my dad getting sick and dying, yeah. you know, um, over the course of that, like sticking with it. Yeah. And I don't re- ever remember taking a holiday or anything like that. I don't think that that's any different from swimming. No. You yeah. Know? yeah. And it, and I don't think that's any different than anything. You're pretty trying much to anything. achieve something big. That's big. Yeah. That's really big. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Small steps. Yes. And that, that's yes. just it. Realistic goals, like things, smaller chunks that you're like, I actually achieved something today. Instead of like, Mm. because how are you going to get there? Mm. Like, it's the same thing. It's like, how are you, what's the process you're going to take to actually, you have this goal far off in the future. What steps are you going to take to actually achieve that for you? It was the writing it and like literally writing it and like five hours a day. Those are the small steps I'm going to take to get there. Swimming is the exact same and needing to take those small for me because time, I wasn't getting any faster. And so for me, it was, it was technical and skill work. 100% just Mm. like trying to find some kind of skill that I was working on in practice and applying it to a race and being like maybe I didn't get any faster but I did that skill well and Mm. I can be happy about that and Mm. so that's like the little step and then those pile up eventually and then and then things got better but yeah exactly yeah yeah like you you know whatever that goal may be for whatever that swimmer yeah. might be olympics might be getting on a national team yeah. might be making the provincials or, yeah. or whatever like you know what the goal is yeah. you know that yeah. you know but it's it's digging in but but you know the difference again you know getting back to my experience not being a competitive swimmer mm-hmm. is that like I can say, okay, I had to work for those five hours a day and, and dig in for, uh, you know, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But even that, you know, doesn't equate to year after year, getting up at five o'clock yeah. in the morning, go, going <laughs> into a cold pool, yeah. um, you know, getting into a cold car. Um, you are dealing with, uh, you know, school mm-hmm. and, and, and even at SMU, like very challenging ath- academics that you had to yeah. achieve as well. Yeah. And of course, you know, moving away from home, I mean, there, there's all of that. And <laughs> yeah. you've, sp- you've spoken about that as well. So I can't even say even a PhD would equate to what I think. I think that that would be easier than what you did. Oh. I do. Oh. You know, so the next thing is a PhD. So you yeah. go for that. No, I don't want to do that. I don't think I want to do that yet. I've had enough challenges it's easy in my life. To everything else will be downhill. It's still hard. <laughs> yeah. So the last question, because yeah, we actually got a little bit off topic on that last one. <laughs> but the last question is: What would your main piece or pieces of advice be for parents uh, with kids in, in sport? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, as we have talked earlier, about staying within your own boundaries mm-hmm. and doing everything that you can to help the swimmer, your swimmer, succeed. Mm-hmm. And that is the taking them to meets and the money that's involved yeah. and the work that's involved and nutrition and getting them to practice and, and you know, putting down the law when they have to go to bed and, mm-hmm. you know, all of, all of those good things that you need to put in place. Let the coach do their job. 
let the swimmer do their job. Uh, listen to your swimmer. Ask your swimmer questions. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what they need, ask them, mm -hmm. and they might know that. And uh, enjoy the journey with your child because it's it's not going to last. Mm -hmm. And enjoy the good times yeah. because the hard times will come. Mm -hmm. It's just like with anything. Mm -hmm. The, the, it's not going to be like that forever. The good times aren't going to last forever. Mm -hmm. and, and neither will the bad times, mm -hmm. you know, but, but enjoy the journey as much as you can with them. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is that it's not for yourself. Your swimmer reflects back on you as a good parent. Mm -hmm. And we all want to be a good parent. We all want our child to succeed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's your child's journey. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not yours. Mm -hmm. And so you can't dictate to them what they should do and the, and the path that sh they, they should take. Mm -hmm. And all of those things that we talked about, about, you know, you've never, you haven't done that yourself. So you can't say, be circumspect, be careful about we, what you, what you say to your child. We talked about a little bit about, you know, be careful what you, what you say to them after a race. Mm -hmm. That, that's a very hard time. Yeah. That's a very hard time for them. And, you know, very important to um, give them what they need mm -hmm. and ask them uh, if, if, if they can verbalize what they need. For Chris and I, we wouldn't have wanted it any other way. We would have never guessed that this was going to be our journey mm -hmm. when our children were born. Mm -hmm. And then looking back on it, it was worth um, all the all the heartache mm -hmm. um, and the tears and the and the ups and downs and the hard nights and the sleepless nights, yeah. etc. At all, but we are you know near the end of that journey, mm -hmm. and our kids have come out of it at the other end mm -hmm. and come out of it intact. Yes, and they would all say, I think even Alistair would say that he enjoyed the journey. Yeah, you know, I hope so. I, I hope so too. And and with him, did decide to take another course of action that turned out fine too. Yeah, that you know, there's no reason why not. Mm -hmm. If their heart isn't in, into it and they're not enjoying it, what's the point? Yeah, there really isn't any yeah. point. And it's hard on them and it's hard on you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Good. Well, I think that's everything for today. Thank you for coming to my vlog. No, this has been lovely. And speaking. My pleasure. It's great to have you. Maybe we'll have you back another I, time I or something else. I was just thinking else. any yeah. other time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you guys for checking in and listening to everything. I hope it was helpful. Again, this is just our story. It's not how it needs to be done by everybody. But if this helped anybody in any way, that's sort of the goal of these vlogs. So I'm glad you guys stayed for the chat. And I'll see you again next time. Bye. Bye-bye.